Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, uh, sorry I've been gone since, like, Saturday, I think, but, uh, I don't know, like the flu or something, it was bad. Anyway, <clears throat> to that and being busy, and then when it came to this, I honestly just didn't have the energy. Uh, but, no, <clears throat> excuse me, first off, I missed out on a bunch, uh, but, and I'm gonna cover several things today. I'm going to do like a, a, at least like four videos um, right now to try and kind of make up for that. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is, is this, you know, uh, Brooke versus Chavez. You know, it's finally official. You know, we got, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's, we kind of knew it was happening now for a while. Um, what is it? Uh, October, October 24th in, in Sheffield, Kell Brooks backyard like his backyard backyard I think it's it's something called like the Monument Center or I read it but I can't remember the name it's something like that in Sheffield uh, the IBF world welterweight title is on the line now my belief is that Chavez doesn't deserve um, the, the shot you know his only real loss, uh, he has, you know, he has two losses on his record and a draw. But in my opinion, you know, the DQ, eh, whatever, you know, that could have went either way, man. That ref lost control of the Chavez Rios fight like immediately, and then it just kept getting worse. He should have took stern control right away, um, even if he had to just take a point from both guys. Let it be known. Look. You keep following, one of you is going to get DQ'd. So there's that fight, um, you know, which he technically, I, I t he technically lost, but, you know, realistically, it's kind of, you know, we don't know what would have happened. Um, Thurman. Thurman beat him. That was an L. Thurman beat him. Um, you know, I think, it, what, what, what did he take him out with? A body shot? Um, that's what really got him. Now, then he goes up against, oh, well, after that, he goes, he, he, you know, after Thurman, he fought, like, some Argentinian dude, uh, Godoy, then he fought Rios, then he comes in against Bradley, and they gave him a draw, and a fight where I know I scored it, and uh, one of my buddies who <clears throat> scored that fight, we talked on the phone right afterwards, um, we each gave uh, Chavez three rounds or four at the most, you know, so I, I couldn't see. It wasn't, to me, it wasn't even like such a close fight where, well, you know, it, it could have went to Chavez, it could have went to Bradley, so, you know, a draw ain't nothing. Uh, the draw was, it was bullshit in my opinion. I think he lost to Bradley. Um, Bradley didn't look his best, but he sure you know, he kind of fought Chavez this fight, but, hey, he beat him at his own game, as far as I'm concerned. And Bradley was doing some things in that fight that I loved. I thought they looked amazing, like his upper body movement and his pivots and um, <clears throat> his slipping and countering. Oh, man, he was doing some great stuff in that fight. Uh, I was really impressed with it, you know. I thought for sure he was going to get the win. And then you start hearing the cards. You're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. And it's a draw. <clears throat> but, okay. Chavez is fighting Brooke, though, right? Chavez has been in there with the top guys. I mean, after he fights Brooke, other than Floyd Manny, you know, the top three guys, Raquel Brooke, Keith Thurman, and Timothy Bradley. You know, Chavez will have been in there with all of those guys. You know, like the the second tier or the next generation, however you want to put it, you know, just take Floyd out of the, Floyd Manny out of the picture. And those are the three best welterweights. <clears throat> so he's, he's, uh, you know, he's been in there with some good fighters already. Um, he had to have learned a lot from it. It's not like, you know, the Thurman, um, I believe it was a KO, uh, because he couldn't get up. I don't think it was, I think it was a KO. But he wasn't, you know, hitting the head and knocked out Colt. 
you know, to where he can get like a concussion or something. So his chin and his his brain and all that, that should be fine. Um, <clears throat> then he had the Godoy uh, Argentinian dude, uh, who I believe was undefeated. But anyway, he knocked him out early. I think it was like the third round or something like that. Then he goes in against Rios, <coughs> takes some good shots, his chin's holding up. He goes in with Bradley, not a hard hitter, but he's taking some good shots. Um, and his chin is clearly holding up. All right, so there's nothing wrong with his chin. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Like he, He's not shot or past his prime or anything like that. He's still in his prime. Uh, it's just hard for him to get over that hump of the, this tier of fighter, you know, the, the Bradleys and the Thurmans. This is going to be a gauge to see where Kell Brook fits. How good is he? Um, this is going to be, but other than Sean Porter, you know, this is going to be a, um, a, a real good test, you know, because we've we seen the Sean Porter fight, okay, but that's gone. Where is he now? You know, where is he after the accident? Um, he looked real good in his last two fights, but, you know, they were against uh, overmatched opposition, and one was, you know, uh, a can. You know, they shouldn't even have been in the ring with him, but one was a mandatory, uh, so he had to do that. But either way, he's getting Chavez a solid welterweight. Um, he's probably a top 10 welterweight. Uh, the 10th spot, you know, is either, you probably got, like, him and him or Rios. Um, one of them would be in the number 10 spot. Uh, I'd basically put him and Rios as, like, tied at 10, you know. So I consider him, a, you know, a, a true top 10 welterweight. Um, way at the bottom of that top 10, you know what I'm saying? He's not a top top 10 guy or anything like that, but being with who we've seen Chavez in with, it's going to be interesting to see what Kel can do with him, right? Because if Kel just outboxes the shit out of him for, say, four or five rounds and really don't get hit with much, breaks him down bad, and then KOs him, um, that's going to make a statement, you know, and Kel said, I am, I'm coming to make a statement against Chavez. And he can do it. Chavez is a type of fighter he can make a statement with. Um, yeah, Thurman fought him a while back. Um, you know, maybe Thurman could do better the second time around. I don't know. Because um, now looking back on all Thurman's fights, like, that was his best performance. Um, I think everyone would agree that that was his best performance. He, had, he stood his ground. Um, he banged it out. He had very quick uh, defensive reflexes. I loved how he was ripping to the body, and Chavez would be coming straight to his chin, and he'd bang, block it immediately, and then rip to the body again. I mean, Thurman looked really good in that fight. So did Chavez, though. Um, and if that Chavez shows up again for Kell Brook, he, he could cause uh, some problems. He could cause some problems for Kell. Now, Kell... We all know he's probably the biggest welterweight, like size-wise. Um, he's a big fucking welter. Uh, he's probably going to enter the ring, you know, 160 pounds, uh, 162 pounds. Um, he's a big guy. Now, he has a couple inches in height, a couple inches in reach. Uh, the exact numbers are... Um, He's uh, Kell Brook's five foot nine with a sixty nine inch reach, and Chavez is five foot seven with a sixty six inch reach. So you know, a couple inches in height, a few inches in reach, and that's gonna matter. It is um, because we know Kell Brook his style. You know, um, he's like the classic boxer um, with athleticism. Also, he's an accurate puncher. He's got a great jab. <clears throat> he's got a uh, powerful straight right hand, and he throws it straight. He can loop it. He can hook it. He got uppercuts. Um, good counter puncher. He can fight on the inside. <clears throat> sorry, it's still just some phlegm. Uh, he, sorry. 
He can fight on the inside, but the one thing I do not want to see is what we saw with Sean Porter. I don't want to see Chavez rushing him, getting grabbed, getting him separated, and then bang. You know, I don't want to see, like, the, the, the Floyd and Madonna thing um, or the, the Kell Brook and Sean Porter thing. No, that's not going to make a statement. Um, not the statement that Brook wants to make. What he needs to make is when he comes in, you know, counter him, get out the way, zap him with a jab, reset, start over. Uh, that's what I'd really like to see. Um, Chavez has power to to hurt anybody. He does. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, Brooks a big guy. Right? He can take a good shot. We know this. He can take a solid shot. It don't bother him at all. Um, like who hits harder, Sean Porter or Keith Thurman? Or, I mean, uh, <clears throat> not Keith Thurman, Chavez. Uh, that's a cl it's a close one. You know, it's a close one. Um, they have different styles, you know, the way they deliver their punches. Um, Chavez kind of has the shorter arms. You know, you can kind of get in there and rough you up. But if you stay on the outside, which is what I expect um, Kell Brook's going to be doing, you know, he's going to be working that jab, working that jab. Uh, you know, coming off the jab with a hook to the body, a straight right, maybe an uppercut or a hook up top. It's going to be a very interesting fight. I really hope, uh, like, HBO or, or even Showtime, someone just pick this fight up. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it, about, like, uh, how we're going to get to see it in the U.S., but I sure hope someone picks it up. Now, we did hear before uh, the few names that were being thrown around after Rios. You know, there was, uh, I think, Bradley, Thurman, and Chavez. Um, then it seemed like Bradley might be the front runner. That's, they were, for them, a few days there, that's the guy they were really working on getting. <clears throat> a unification fight, that would have been great. I mean, that would have been a, a true 50-50 fight. You would have had the classical big man boxer against the little pit bull who's going to keep coming and coming and coming. <clears throat> Because that would have had to have been uh, Bradley's game plan to win over there. And that just shows you the heart, first of all. Bradley was willing to go over there and put his title on the line with their champion. You know, that's that's ballsy. That means you got confidence in yourself. All right, I'm tired of people saying, or certain fighters, and I'm not talking about Floyd. I'm talking about any fighter. I don't want to go over there. I'm scared I'll get robbed. Like, then you don't have confidence that you're going to clearly win. I, I mean, come on. You know, all the greats, they would go anywhere, even on 50-50 fights. Now, I really wanted that bradley uh, Brook fight. Like, I really wanted that fight. I was so happy when I heard he was in the mix. But then, when you hear why it couldn't be made, the Bradley was, they, they couldn't afford to bring him over. Um... <clears throat> Bradley makes a lot of money. Uh, you guys know it. Um, he got like a, a, a guaranteed minimum of six million, but he can get more. You know, he'll get six, seven, eight million, a little more for fights. Uh, and that is why, though, like when you when you see his resume and you look down it, and you're like, every one of these fights are you know big big fights. Um, they'll all draw a crowd, and then you look at where they're at, too, and it always makes sense. But that's the deal he wanted. You know, he said, I want to make sure I get my maximum uh, potential out of my money. I want maximum earnings. But with the promoter, in order for the promoter not to lose his ass, he's going to have to put you in tough fights every single time. So then tickets sell. So HBO picks it up. Um you know, so that's kind of, uh, it's good that Bradley gets that money, you know, but you'll, and it sucks that he has to non-stop just keep fighting, like, like tough fights, uh, but you'll hear him complain about it every once in a while, like, hey, they never give me an easy fight, I'm always in with the dog, well, he always leaves out the part that, uh, other than pay-per-view guys, he's the highest paid boxer out there, the highest paid fighter out there. 
uh, the, the, for other than the pay-per-view guys, you know, other than the Kodos and Canelos and Mannies and Floyds and the pay-per-view guys, you know, this kid or this guy makes a lot of money. Um, they couldn't afford to bring him over, you know. I'm sure it was they probably wanted something like eight, ten million. Uh, and we know Chavez is dirt cheap, dirt cheap. Um, I don't know how true it is, you know, but they said on HBO that he got less than a hundred thousand um, dollars to fight Bradley, while Bradley was getting multi, multi millions. Uh, not tens, but he, he was getting somewhere like six, eight million. Um, and he's fighting a guy who's not even getting a hundred grand. Uh, and maybe that could explain why the fight was so tough for him, too. Because Chavez was like, fuck it, I'm going all out. Um, but that lets you know that you can get Chavez and you can get him cheap. Um,. What, they probably gave him a couple hundred thousand pounds, you know, a couple hundred thousand euros, um, which would be nice for him, you know, uh, back in Argentina. But, hey, you know, when it comes, when it's business, I mean, the fight that everyone wanted was Bradley versus Brooke. But, you know, money, the dollars make sense, man, and it did. The money just wasn't there. Um, they would have had to have that fight somewhere else and not in Sheffield. But Chavez, they can bring him over, do it wherever they want. And also, Brooke needs to get his ass back to the States. I know they're trying uh, over there. They want to make him a, um, like a UK sensation, a UK pay-per-view type star. Uh, that's what Hearn said. They're building on that. That's what they're working towards. Well, you know, you can still do that and then bring them over here every once in a while, you know? Uh, I'm sure they could have done that Bradley and Brooke fight over here and just co-promoted it with top rank, and then we could have got the damn fight. You know, we could have got the fight. It was the whole problem with it being in Sheffield. Um, they just wanted the fight in Sheffield. They weren't thinking of nowhere else. Um, you know, location was made up before anything. That should be the last thing. Um, you basically figure out the fight. Where can we afford it? Who will pay us the highest license fee to have it in their uh, their arena, their stadium, wherever. <clears throat> so it couldn't work out that way. Hopefully his next fight does, though. You know, because if he can... Um, I mean, and, and he's not the... It's not like he's the first uh, English guy, guy from the UK to do this. A lot of those guys would come grab up a title um, and fight over in the UK for a while until there was a big money fight. Then they'd come back here, or the fight would be held over there. Um, one that comes to mind right now was uh, Nigel Benn and Gerald McClellan. You know, um, <clears throat> Nigel Benn was going to have to take a pay cut or fight. Uh, or fight Gerald McClellan. And Nigel said, no one's taken my, any of my money off of me. He said, they say they called uh, Gerald McClellan the, the mini Mike Tyson back then, you know. So he said, bring in mini Mike Tyson. You know, sadly, we know that we know the story of what happened um, there. And, you know, God forbid, I mean, you, looking back on it, you're like, how couldn't someone see what was happening there? Um, you know, the pouring the water on his head, and he, he looks up at his coach, and he says, I, I felt that on my brain. Um, and he keeps rubbing his eyes and blinking. So, I mean, come on. Uh, that was every sign. And none of the doctors at ringside could notice that. You know, it, I didn't like that. Plus, he fucking... The, and plus, the shit should have never happened. It should have never happened because Gerald McClellan... Knocked them the fuck out in the very first round. All right. And they still try to pull that whole, no, if you go outside the ring, you get 20 seconds. Bullshit. You get 20 if you fall off the mat. Off the mat. That means go out of the ring. Land on the floor, on a table. That's when you get 20 seconds. All he did was fell through the fucking ropes. 
Alright, and they gave him 15 seconds. That was bullshit. And that caused Gerald McClellan to, you know, get the, the brain damage that he's suffering to this day. All because they didn't want their hometown fighter to lose. Um, well, he lost. He fucking lost. You know, it's bullshit. It's total bullshit. Um, that accident could have been stopped right there. If the real winner would have just got announced, um, and then once something, once the you could see something was going wrong, <clears throat> the ringside doctors should have came up and started talking to him, but they didn't. Not at all. And maybe they were too into the fight themselves and wanted their countrymen to win, you know. But they're, they're not supposed to be there as a boxing fan. Even if you are a boxing fan, you go back and rewatch the tape afterwards if you want to watch the fight. What you do is you watch the fighter or the fighters, whoever you're assigned to or the fighters. You know, not the fight and be too into the fight that you can't even see that something's seriously wrong here. Um, you know, the one thing is it'll never happen again in boxing because we know those signs now. Um, but I just can't get over the fact that no doctors at ringside knew what that was. They had to. You know, they had to. Um, and that fight should have been even overturned. It should have been overturned, and the win, they should have gave the win to McClellan. I mean, the kid's never going to fight again. He fucking won the fight. I mean, come on, at least give the kid that. Right? He won the fight. He blitzed you. He took you out in the first round, man. And I like Nigel Ben. I like him a lot. You know, I'm happy what he's doing with his life now, how he turned it around. Um, he had a great uh, fundraiser for McClellan. I think they got him like a quarter million or something like that. So that's going to help out because, you know, McClellan, it's just him and his sisters. Uh, that's who takes care of him. Uh, man, off topic. But that, that, that whole fight really pisses me off when I think about it sometimes. Um, McClellan had such a bright future ahead of him. We were going to see some amazing fights with him. And all because they cheated for their man, you know. If he would have took Ben out, and, you know, in, in that first round, like he did, and they would have just awarded him the winner, he would have, it would have never happened. He would have continued on with a career. It was a freak occurrence, man. I do remember Nigel Ben saying um, <clears throat> when he got hit with that hook, <clears throat> that put him out of the ring. He said it hit every, all his tendons and neck, neck muscles just tore. He said he felt them all tear, and his head just wanted to be like blump. And he fought through that. You know, he was a uh, what do they he called a uh, squatty. You know, uh, military guys over there. Uh, <clears throat> he was a tough son of a bitch. You know, but he lost the fight. He lost. You know. Um, that's sad, man, because that could have been stopped two different ways. But anyway, fighters, you know, especially those, um, you remember the, the the guys from the 168-pound division, the super middleweights, when there was, you know, uh, Watson and Eubank and Ben, and, uh, all those guys, right? They would have a lot of, they were scared of American fighters back then, though. I mean, like, intimidated, like, scared. Um like James Tony, uh, I remember James Tony punking him, and they they were scared of James Tony, uh, but you know they would have their fights over there. But if there was a big enough one, you know they would come over, um, or if they had to. I mean, look at Kelzogi, he fought most, damn near all of his career um, across the pond, and then end of it's coming some big careers, some big fights, but. That's the difference, see. Kell Brook was already here, won his title here. So if you want to go over there, have a few fights, understandable. Um, but you got to come back. And you can't wait until the end of your career. You can't wait till you lose your title and then hope some American's going to give you a shot uh, over here. No, man, you know, give a couple, go ahead, build your shit up over there, you know, uh, and I'd say after this Chavez fight, have one in America, man. 
that like this is where you want to come to. I mean, you were already here. Um, you know, you were already here, and then you're going back for years. It's it's like, come on, man, it's time to come back. And I know it's not up to Kel. It's not up to Kel, so I can't be mad at Kel. It's Hearn. Hearn don't want him to, to fight over here. He wants to build him up as a star over there. Um, which, okay, I, I understand, you know, that's they can make a ton of money over there. Um, <clears throat> but you're in a welterweight division that is stacked. And all the big welterweight fights are taking place in America. Now, if he wants his next fight to be against, like, a Thurman or something like that, and he's going to bring Thurman over there? Okay. But you, if you're if you're going to fight over there, you better at least start fighting the top guys. You know, um, don't just go fighting mandatories and then picking a slouch. You know, not a slouch, but a lower top ten type guy. Because um, then it'll really <clears throat> remind me of, like, <coughs> a Floyd Mayweather or something. Except Floyd would rarely fight his mandatories. Um but uh, I don't want to see someone staying in their backyard, you know, fighting mandatories and then an easy fight. You know, fight a mandatory. If that's the tough fight, then all right, that's your tough fight. Then you can fight someone and, you know, out, you know, outside the top five, but in the top ten. But at least every two fights, uh, you should be fighting a top guy. Someone inside that, you know, top six uh, type type guy, you know any of the top welterweights. We all know who they are. Um, Chavez is not a top welterweight. He's a top ten welterweight, but he's not a top welterweight. We know who they are, right? Um, I'll get. I'll give him a pass on this one. I I do because first of all, I want to see how him and Brooke how that fight turns out. You know, because it's going to be a good gauge on. Who Kell Brook really is, how good he really is. You know, we get to see, we get to compare him to to Thurman and Bradley, um, the other two top welterweights. Because like I said, it's Thurman, Bradley, and Brook, and Chavez will have been in with all of them. So <clears throat> if if Brook can do what none of them have ever done before, which is dominate him and knock him out with a headshot or a body shot. I don't care, but dominate him. Like, win every round, clearly. Maybe lose one, but, you know, if, say if it's a seven-round fight, you lose one, stop him. Um, if it goes to a decision and it was an ugly fight, then uh, that's not going to help him at all. At all. Um, you know, his fan base would drop. It would drop. His American fan base, they I think it would drop. You know, his UK fan base, I'm sure they'd still be with him. Uh, no matter what, you know, because they're loyal. And they are uh, passionate. You know, like I said before, man, the, the Latinos and uh, all the Spanish and the, the, the guys from the, the whole, you know, UK, uh, they keep the sport of boxing alive. Um, they get about as passionate as I wish all the fans did. So, you know, much props to them for supporting their fighters. So going out to the fights, I mean, come on. We need, you know, you guys are the backbone of the sport. So, you know, I just, uh, I don't know. I hope Brooke makes a statement, you know, because I put faith in Brooke. You know, I put faith in him. I think, uh... I think he's going to be a force. I think he's going to be a force. But this is going to be the fight that's going to let me know if he is or isn't. Like I said, if he dominates him, then he's what I thought he was. And if it's an uh, ugly fight, goes to a decision, it's a close, close fight, then, eh, no, you know, he's going to have to... Well, he's going to have to reevaluate what the hell he wants to do. Um, in his career anyway, but, and then I'm going to have to reassess, uh, where he fits in the welterweight picture. Uh, but let me know what you think about this fight. Are you happy it's happening? Do you like it? Um, you know, prediction wise, I mean, I think Brooks gonna, gonna win and I think he's going to win, uh, 
fairly easily. Uh, I do. I actually think he'll get rid of them. Um, later rounds, though. I think he'll get rid of them like the ninth, tenth round, something like that. Um, I know it's a far way away. This is just an early prediction of a generalization of what I would see happening. Um, <clears throat> Chavez says he's going to try to push Brook uh, backwards and that Brook don't like fighting backwards. It's not that he don't like fighting backwards. He just holds his ground. If you come in, he's cracking you, holding his ground, pivoting, and nailing you. He can fight going backwards. Um, he just doesn't prefer to. You know, I've never seen him going backwards and, like, not know what to do or something. He can clearly fight backwards. Um, and he that could lead Chavez to run right into a counterpunch by Kell Brook. And that could be the end of his night. So, you know, we're going to have to see. But let me know what you think about the fight. All right, Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.